you think, you know, we don't want to make a record like Woody would make a record. We wanted to make a record that, the best way I can explain it to, to working with, when working with Wilco was when, when Bob Dylan and the band made the basement tapes, they played a lot of old timey music as well as new songs. If you've heard the whole of the basement tapes, a lot of the stuff is old timey Carter family songs and stuff like that. But you listening to them, you knew that the band that were playing those old timey songs had heard Little Richard. Much as I love the Carter family, they never heard Little Richard. And what I was saying to, to, to Wilco guys was, the people who listen to this record must know that the musicians playing the songs have heard the clash. You know, we've got to, we've got to bring Woody, which is a good thing because one of the hugest influences on Joe Strummer, before he became Joe Strummer, was Woody Guthrie. He called himself Woody Mellors when he lived in South Wales, Buskin. He introduced himself to people as Woody. So, you know, that's why the Clash painted stuff on their guitars, because Woody did. So, this made a, a lot of sense. And if we felt at all nervous about that, finding this manuscript for this song kind of changed that. Because in one of Woody's notebooks, he wrote in the top left corner, tempo of the songs, to remind himself to how to play the songs. And it's the only bit of musical, the only sniff of musical notation we've got in the entire project, just in this one notebook. So it's only about a dozen songs that had this notation. And this particular song, the notation was Supersonic Boogie. <laughs> now, wow. or would he go for you to come write a supersonic boogie song, even if he hadn't heard the clash, would get where they were coming from. It's my argument. And it's a well-known fact that he, he used to drive, when he lived in the Almanac house with P.C. He used to drive him crazy by playing John Lee Hooker records, the same little nick over and over again, lifting the needle, putting it back, lifting the needle, back, to try and work out those lyrics. And when I mentioned this song to Jody, one of his sons, he said to me that the old man, when he was ill in hospital, had asked for a Les Paul electric guitar. Obviously the family couldn't afford that, they couldn't supply it, but he really, because he loved new uh, gadgets, was what uh, Jody told me. Anything new, new toaster, new car, new guitar, he wanted it. And it's a shame really because I have a, a fabulous image of uh, had Woody not succumbed to the Huntington's disease that ultimately killed him, uh, if he'd have stayed healthy, of him turning up at the Newport Folk Festival in 1957 <laughs> with a Les and breaking Pete Seeger's heart long before <laughs> Boy Dylan came up with the idea. So that's, uh, that's the willful little bastard that Woody Guthrie was. I want to talk a little bit about Woody's notes here wrote underneath this song. I'm going to play for you now. Joe already touched upon uh, Lead Belly being an influence on Woody. He was kind of, uh, he was kind of Woody's hero in the way that Woody was Dylan's hero. Lead Belly was Woody's hero. And Lead Belly and Woody both come from a time where folk music was just that, music that folk played. It hadn't been divided into blues and country and bluegrass and R&B and stuff like that. It was just all kinds of music, and Woody himself was quite influenced by blues players, both country blues and electric blues. And I just want to read what he says about this song I'm going to play for you now. I called him Spiderfinger because his fingers walked up and down like a tarnic, like a great big hairy tarantula. This was just one of the tunes he sung, I forgot just how it went, but I know it was too good to keep hid. So I throwed some words of my own onto it, and it whistled out down the line, still a roll. And it's my song now, and my version, and she's still a roll. Just like Spiderfinger sung it and played it and shook half of Texas and Kansas and Oklahoma and New Arizona down with it. And that's a great evocation of, of how Woody was learning songs and picking up uh, influences as a young man in, uh, in Texas. And when I read that uh, mention of this guy, Spiderfinger, my mind immediately threw up a very famous photograph of the king of the Delta Blues, Robert Johnson, who was born just a year before Woody Guthrie. A photograph of him holding an acoustic guitar with his fingers on the neck, incredibly long fingers, like the legs of a spider. <laughs> 